Okay, today we are going to do some Aboriginal handprint dot art from the country of Australia. So hopefully you have watched one or both of the videos um, linked down below in the page and learned a little bit about this cool country and some of the Aborigines. Um, so the handprint means belonging and belonging here. And so we're going to do our own Aboriginal handprint art. Sound cool? Yeah. So the first thing you need is a colored piece of paper. Um, any color will work. You can't even use white if you don't have colored paper, but I think it kind of looks cool on a color. So I'm going to do orange. And I just going to do blue, so you're really going to get to see some different art. So you're going to take your pencil. I'm going to use a pen so you can see what I'm doing. And you're going to put your hand in the middle of the page. Now if you need um, a parent or an older sibling or a friend to help you, um, they you can put your handprint down and they can trace it. So anywhere in the middle of the page, trace your hand. If you need help, let me know. Make sure you press down really hard. Well, you can, you can go on and do the rest of your arm if you want and do your wrist into your arm, or you can just close up the hands. Like that. So Ali's a little hard to see, but you'll be able to see it when she's done. So we've done that, and now, um, good. No problem? Yeah, it looks good. So the background, you can keep it plain and not do any designs. Um, if it looks like too much work, like it would take you forever to do all of these, or um, you can go for it. So I did my handprint, and then in the background, I did these like circles you can kind of see. And I went from this printout, which is down below, you can print it off, or you can zoom in on this and take a look. And I decided to use, um, it's called like a campsite, or it's like a gathering. So I kind of took my art to be like a belonging and gatherings, you know, just during this time of missing my friends, um, just finding a way to make a piece of art that kind of reflects that. So I went ahead and used some Aboriginal symbols around mine, but you can do whatever you want. I've seen it done with like flowers or rainbows or just simple geometric shapes, whatever work, or you can use one of these. So you're just going to sketch a couple around in the background um, that you're going to end up dotting over, okay? Okay. Are you done? Yeah. All right, that's my cue. That means I'm done too. Okay, so I did some water or smoke <laughs> up at the top, and then rain, and then the swirls right here, which again, watering hole or gatherings or campsite. Kind of cool. What did you decide to do? Um, I did rainbows on the corner. Oh, perfect. Okay, so once you've sketched it out, um, you're going to get a paintbrush and your paints, 
And I did the whole rainbow, but you don't need to, you can just use the pink colors that you're gonna use. Make sure that you have water. And then of course, some kind of paper towel or napkin or something for our spills. Okay, so you're gonna start with white. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna outline with dots um, your handprint. Okay? Okay. So when you're painting, I always just put paint on the tip of the paintbrush. I don't put tons on. And I'm just gonna make the dots going around. Now with this, you're gonna need to go back fairly often. You can make the dots big or small. You don't have to do. We finished dotting the outside of our hands, and now we're going to wash our paintbrushes, dry them. We're not doing watercolors, so your paintbrush needs to be dry. And then you're going to choose a solid color to do the dots on the inside of the hands, unless you decide to keep a blank in there. Um, I am going to choose green. I need a yellow. All right. So you're going to do the same thing. You're going to just do your dots inside your hand and dot it in. I would actually make these a little bit bigger if you can. Oh, we should be washing my brush this morning. Make sure you're going back in getting enough paint each time. Otherwise your colors won't be real vibrant. Lots of dots, can you finish? Good, I like yours. Um, I'm gonna be nitpicky here. Fix a couple of these dots, I can tell I don't like. But whatever. Okay, so once we finish the inside of the hand, since that is the center of this piece, is the hand, the next step, you want it to be like kind of like a secondary, it's the background, right? So the hand should be the part that stands out the most, okay? So keeping that in mind, you're gonna try to not use a lot of white, anywhere. You can see I did a little bit in my finished one in the ba in the background and then I stopped because I realized it was going to take away from the handprint. So I've used green and white. So I want to stay away from any more white. You can incorporate your yellow or my green again, but every time I put down another dot and kind of add to my background, I want to make sure that my main focus is the handprint, the, the sense of belonging, right? Since that's the focus of it. So now you're just going to do the same idea. You're going to go ahead and put the dots on the different um, designs that you did in your background. Um, and keep it in mind, you know, warm and cool colors and how you want to mix them together. You can use one color or you can use every color of the rainbow. Totally up to you, okay? Always wash and dry your paintbrush. I always say your paintbrush should look cool and calm, right? I haven't decided what colors I'm going to use yet. What are you going to use? Um, I don't know. I think I just have to go for my favorite color. Oh, you went for my favorite color too. Right? I think you go for it. That's what I thought of first. And then every time my color starts to get like less vibrant, I just go back into the pink. And if these like tiny dots are driving you crazy, I mean, they don't have to near crazy. They look great. Um, you just have to make bigger dots, and then it covers more space, and then it'll be done faster. See? It looks like a purple snail, kind of. So 
I finished my swirls and I'm gonna go and do my other lines now, but I realize it's still kind of wet. So I, one of the tricks my teachers always told me was, whenever you have finished painting something, try to keep the wettest stuff away from you. So go ahead and just rotate your page, right? That way you're not putting your hand through the paint that you just did. Kind of makes sense. Yeah. Right? I've done that so many times I get paint all over me. Um, I don't know what colors. Should I stick with my cool colors or should I switch? I think I'm just gonna stick with them. Okay, dot, dot, dot. So many dots. Make these big. The bigger ones, I just use more of my paintbrush. I ended up mixing a, a light blue. I decided I needed the light blue for up here in the sky, no water section. I can't decide if it's like raining or water. I don't know the story behind my piece of art yet. But it'll come. Oops. It's a big color explosion. Yeah. Well, that's great. The dots kind of got weird at the end. Oh well. Okay, so that's it. That is the end of the lesson. Um, you can see you can really end up filling it in the background if you want. If you've got the time and the patience for it, you can uh, fill it in. I use black dots in the background of this one. This one I'm just going to leave it that way. I kind of like it. It's simple, but I could even add more straight lines or diagonal lines or something to kind of fill in the background. But I think I'm just going to leave it that way. What do you think? Do you like it? Well, what's, what do you have to always do to your artwork when you're done? Gotta sign it, right? <laughs> sign it, and I like to date it too, but that's up to you. You can date it on the back. I like to know when things have been done. All right, well, that's it for now. Everyone stay uh, safe and healthy and happy. Till next time. Bye. Bye.